Hey, welcome. My name is Abad Leiva from Tecuanapa, Guerrero, Mexico, the south of Mexico, the Costa Chica of Guerrero, la más grande de las costas. If you're coming from TikTok, thank you so much. What an amazing community I have found in TikTok. It's, what a blessing, man. Really blessing. So, the purpose of this YouTube channel will be to expand on the videos that I post on TikTok because on TikTok, 60 seconds. It's just 60 seconds. And showing you the videos that I also use on the edit, editing, the music, and everything. So, you will know everything that you see in the one minute video in TikTok in like the next 10 minutes in here and I hope you like it. So the first video that we're going to talk about is the Cimarrones, the black Cimarrones and how is that they interacted and mixed with the indigenous people in Guerrero. But let's go into the video and then we'll go step by step. Black people are not a Cimarrones through Latin America, but what a black Cimarron is and how is that they mix with indigenous people? It's hard to specify when black people first came to Latin America, but one thing is clear is that the mixing happens very smooth. It seems to me that we just saw each other, we started sharing knowledge with each other, and we started making babies. We mix our beliefs, traditions, community, food, we mix our music. Doña Elvira. Doña the part of Guerrero where I was born was the territory of the Yope people, who were known to be wild against the Spaniards. They would exterminate every settlement that came close to them, but that didn't happen with black people. To have full villages for themselves and live a regular life. And you know, Simarro means an animal that has been domesticated, but once it frees itself, goes back to wild. So we only started separating each other until independence came and a political and economical system was established. That's when we started pointing fingers at each other saying, you're less than me. No, you're less than me. We actually love each other. Like a lot. So black people are known as Cimarrones in Mexico and Latin America. That's a name that kind of like stuck with us. And Cimarron, like I said in the video, means a domesticated animal that once it frees itself, goes back to being wild. And this is a definition by a person that thought that owning another human as a slave was okay. All right, so obviously, being a black cimarron today in Mexico and Latin America is a pride. And if it's not a pride to you, that's why I'm making this video for you to realize that it is a pride. It's something amazing that we did. Our ancestors were brave enough to escape, to run into the wild and to find a way to be free. You know, and they found indigenous people, which is my other side. Man, amazing. The reason why I say it's hard to specify when black people came to America because there's some theories and there's some people that I respect and I don't want to get into that but it's difficult to say if Africans came as slaves first because it seems that there's also other things uh, that happened before like around even in the 1300s where Africans were already exploring this side of the world and there's also some evidence of some indigenous people in the Gulf of Mexico around Veracruz, which is also the point where Hernan Cortes came into Mexico. Indigenous people in that side of, the, of Mexico have some tools that are exactly the same as some people in Africa. And they said that there were black people that came and exchanged those tools with them. So that's why I, don't want, I just want to respect that. I want to say that, I want to honor that, because I know that with colonization we lost a lot of our, our history. You know, there are communities like my community that are completely mixed. It's indigenous and black, mixed. There are communities that are completely indigenous up until today. And there are communities that are mostly black. I could probably say 100% black. I'm showing you there. Los Diablos that I show you in one of the other videos. Which is a African danza in Guerrero. And then the song that you're listening to is El Poquilín. El Poquilín!
which is just instrumental, but it's been used in movies and television, and it's just famous. It's, it's, it's one of the songs that is just pure Costa Chica, Costeño, Afro-Mexican. Afro it's sung by multiple bands, but this one, I picked this one because it's the El, El Grupo Mikabu, from Coyantes, the, uh, Oaxaca, Mexico. Black and indigenous, and the music is black and indigenous, and the way we dance it is black and indigenous, and you can see the attitude of the girls. You know, some of them don't smile. They're dancing, you know, but they're, they don't smile. They just have this attitude, man. And it's, it's that Afro-Mexican attitude that I know since I was little. The full video is right here on YouTube. So you should check them out. And then we go into the Jope people. Is black people escaping? And where are they going? They're going into the Yope territory. And the Yope people were warriors. You know, this is something that you can find across many indigenous cultures, like the Mexicas, same like the Yope people. Very smart. They knew about the faces of the moon. They knew when to plant. They knew when to move. They knew how to use engineering to bring water, how to keep their cities clean, how to organize. But at the same time, it's known that the Yope people were known by the Spaniards as very aggressive, very violent people because they would exterminate their settlements. They would kill babies and grandmas. They would burn down everything that the settlements set up every time they tried. Then it comes Mexican independence. We don't have colonizers anymore. And that's when things start changing. As an educational system in Mexico is created, create this narrative that erased indigenous and Afro cultures. And even Asian, because Mexico also have history with Asian people living in Mexico. We have huge Asian communities and we're gonna talk about that soon. And the only resonance that we have, the only mirrors that we, we could reflect ourselves in were either ridiculize or criminalize on popular Mexican culture. So when I started going to school, that's when I started hearing the concept of mestizo. And I believe myself to be a mestizo, right? Like it was easy. I wanted to belong and we want to belong. We want to be part of everything. And so our mentality started to change. For me, it was right there. Before that, my parents didn't learn about this mestizaje. So mestizaje was not a concept for my parents. It was later with the castas was, were created that the mestizaje was seen as a reasonable way to escape the castas and make Mexico into just one single people believed to be uh, indigenous and European. But in Mexico, like in many other places, people tend to be more interested on discovering their European side not so much their indigenous side. And people are always eager to tell you about my great-great-grandfather was from Italy or from Spain. The Afro and the indigenous sides are completely erased, silenced. It was difficult to access my hometown, so it was not something easy to go back and forth. We didn't have television. Guerrero was left always outside of the benefits of progress. And so when television started to get into my hometown was when I was little. My parents in the 60s and 70s didn't watch TV. And you know the first TV show that I saw, I didn't see any kids like me. And you know what I saw kids like me? In a freaking commercial asking for money for these poor indigenous kids that were living like somewhere far away in Mexico. And they were eating tortillas, sitting on the floor, and it was exactly the way I used to eat. At my grandma's house, my, my mom's mom, we would go to her house and she would make memelas on the comal with, you know, the leñas, the fire, the, the fogón, on the floor. And we would just sit down on the floor and just wait, talk to her. And I saw myself in that commercial and that was a shock. Oh my God, I'm poor. Not only poor, but I'm indigenous. I'm an Indio. It is started, man this denial of myself, this ignorance of myself, this belief that I needed to become something else in order for me to become 
successful, you know. And then you keep on growing, and then you see on television Tomás, Memín Pinguín, La India Maria, all of these depictions of indigenous and blacks in a very disrespectful way, you know. And this is across Latin America, man. So you keep on denying yourself because you don't want to be that funny character. Just me as an Afro-Mexican, it was really important, has always been important for me to be serious about my profession, to be professional, you know, to be respected because I know what I'm talking about and I'm saying it with respect. You know, I'm not saying it to just tell you that I'm better than anybody else. No, it's just to tell you that I, I'm as serious as any white man could be serious about their profession. You know, that way, I don't want to be dancing around. I don't want to be pocking my lips. I don't want to be ridiculizing any of my roots. That's what I talk about Yanga. That's what I talk about Benko's Bioho. That's what I talk about all of these Afro and indigenous successful stories and, and people because I needed that and history gave me that. When I went into history outside of a school, that's when I started finding, like, I don't need to deny myself. Like, there's richness in the way I am. There's, there is enough on being me. You know, I don't need to change myself. I don't need to you colonize my mind and colonize my way of thinking and colonize my way of communicating. Even though I'm speaking English and I speak Spanish as well, both are colonizers' languages, if you ask me. So, so it seems that the political and economical system was what separated us. I don't want to also romanticize this relationship. In order for us to love each other, we also need to bring justice to each other. We need to make sure that we all have financial justice, housing justice, wealth justice, health justice. And this neoliberalistic society that we've created, we need that. Thank you so much for being here today and we're going to keep on talking about everything that you want. I'll see you on TikTok with a video every day and I'll see you here with a video twice a week.